Bom dia, Portugang. To the bime. This is starting a small business with none or very little capital. Let's check it out. Ace good, ace good, ace good, ace good. Weekend. It's Portuguese good. All right, before we get started, I noticed that many of you who enjoy my content still haven't gotten around to subscribing yet. It costs you nothing to subscribe, but it really, really helps me out. So go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Go on, smash it. And if you don't... That's ignorant. All right, let's get into it. So the idea for this video came about because I've had quite a few people ask me where I get my business ideas from and how I raise capital. Recently, I've had another business idea, which I want to do with my sons. I'll tell you what my latest idea is at the end of the video. We sat down together and I gave them the outline. Christian's first question was, where are you going to get the money for that? My answer, we'll start small and build up to it. And starting small is really my main point. You don't have to do everything right away. Let's start by defining some terms. I define a successful small business as a business that allows me to quit my day job and earn more money than I would working for someone else. I should be comfortable and be able to do those normal things at least. So pay all my bills, put food on the table, take a holiday each year, you get the picture. If it makes more, great, but it has to at the very least make ends meet. Now, back to Christian's question. Where are we going to get the money for that? It's a valid concern and a common one for anyone looking to start a business. The trick is to start small and build up. You don't need to have a massive budget to begin with. In fact, starting with a smaller investment allows you to test your ideas, make mistakes and learn without risking everything. I'm only human and I can remember a time when I wondered where people get business ideas from. I think the tap opened for me when I ran my man with a van business in England about 20 years ago. What happened was that we'd been living in Sweden for various reasons and decided to move back to the UK as I was interested in having a go at running a pub. Has anyone guessed that I have ADHD yet? I had a van and we used that to move all our belongings to England. I had to find something to do while we looked for a pub and I also needed time to get my innkeeper's license. Anyway, I was flicking through the newspaper and noticed an advert for a man with a van. I thought, I have a van and I'm a man. I also had a lawnmower. So I advertised, helpful man, big blue van, and in came the work. I looked at all the other offers and realized I could run several ads offering all sorts of services. Within a couple of months, I was doing removals, mowing lawns, hedge trimming, power washing drives and walls, repairing PVC guttering, painting, all of the equipment was paid for from profit, and within three months, I had two full-time employees. So the lessons were, don't be afraid to diversify, start small, and reinvest in your business, and advertise. So that was the start. I've been self-employed ever since. We did end up running a pub in Oxford for about six months, but the UK made things impossible for my wife, visa-wise, a rant for another video, and we moved to Hong Kong. This time, I had to wait for a teaching role to come up. As you know, I'm an ESL teacher by trade. While looking through an expat website, I noticed a peculiar thing in Hong Kong through expats complaining. You can hire a man with a van and it's cheap, but the man doesn't help. All he does is turn up in the van, you load and unload it. I made a quick website offering English style man and van services. The customer called me, I'd meet them and then call a HK van. One of my vans, I'd say. I would load the van and unload it. I would get, say, 750 HKD, so 75 quid, and pay the van driver 100 HKD or 10 quid. Two or three of those each day, you get the picture. After a few weeks, I bought a big Honda Odyssey with the profits, which we used as a family car and could also be used as a van for 75% of the jobs, further increasing our profits. I even did some chauffeuring and tour guide stuff with that Odyssey. Why not? The lesson, look at social media. What do people want? Can you help them? If yes, go make money. I ended up getting a contract with the school, which is what I wanted to do, but I also wanted my own language centre. The problem with a language centre is you need equipment, rent, plus all the other overheads. So you need capital, right? Wrong. We had a living room at our house. So before lessons, 
we would remove everything and set it up like a classroom. After lessons, we'd move the living room stuff back. A pain in the ass? You bet. So I was teaching during the day, teaching in the evenings, then I would go to the airport and unload cargo all night to make more money. After three months, we opened our language center. Where did the capital come from? Sweat equity, my friends. And we started with just bats on the floor. Over the course of a few years, we added tables, chairs, furniture, computers, and so on. We started slow, we reinvested, and we grew. We had Bryant English for over a decade until the virus came along. And Bryant English still exists, albeit online. But where did that mindset come from? How did I know how to do this? Well, I paid attention to mentors. Mentors, the people who've been there, done that, and are nice enough to share their wisdom with you. I've had many mentors over the years. Some have offered life advice, some business advice. One mentor I met in Hong Kong, a very wealthy businesswoman, told me not to be a barber. What did she mean? Well, think about it. You can only cut one head of hair at a time. It's not exactly scalable. Sure, you could hire a team of barbers or become the next high-end hair artist, but you get the point. You want a business model that doesn't cap your growth at the number of heads you can get your scissors on. Instead, look for opportunities where you can expand your reach without exponentially increasing your workload. Think digital products, automated services, or anything that can grow without needing you to clone yourself. By the way, this is why I open a language center rather than teach students at their home one-to-one. -one. Groups. Teaching groups. Does it make sense? Another mentor, a former publican I met in Cockermouth in the UK when I was looking to run a pub, dropped this gem. Everything you buy for your business must make you money. And you must be able to explain to yourself how and how long it will take to pay for itself. So before you splurge on that fancy office chair that's basically a throne, ask yourself, is it going to bring in the bucks? Spoiler alert, it probably won't. Focus on investments that have a clear path to profitability. For example, if you're considering a software tool, it should save you time, improve efficiency, or directly contribute to the revenue. If you're unsure how an expense will benefit your bottom line, it's probably not worth it. On that last point, we had Brian English in an office block called My Loft in Hong Kong for over a decade. And during that time, we saw many language centers open and close, typically within six to 12 months. The worst example was a teacher I knew who told me that she'd invested 150,000 quid into her center, her life savings, and quit her teaching job. I went and looked at her center that was on the floor above mine. It was beautiful. The decor, the equipment, wow. Six months later, gone. Why? Well, that takes me nicely on to So you're dreaming of becoming the next big entrepreneur. Great, but here's a dose of reality. Don't quit your day job just yet. If you have a job, cling to it like a lifeline until your business is actually making a profit. Enough for you to live on, not just buy that extra fancy coffee. Your current paycheck is basically free money for growing your business. Sure, you might worry about the workload, Newsflash, if you think starting a business means working less, you're in for a big shock. Get ready to welcome insane hours like an old friend. Quitting your job too soon will throw you into financial stress fill and cripple your ability to pivot your business model in the early days. With an income, you can afford to make loss leader decisions to attract more profitable business in the long run and take risks without panicking every time you hear your bank account balance. So keep that job. You'll thank me later when you're not eating ramen noodles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And with my language center, there was also the simple fact that as I was teaching in schools during the day, I always had parents asking me for lessons for their kids, and everyone knew I had a language center. In fact, more than 50% of my students came from the schools I taught at. So to wrap things up, Starting a small business with little or no capital is all about being smart with your resources and scaling up gradually. Define success on your own terms. Start small and reinvest your profits. Remember, you don't have to do everything all at once. Focus on making steady progress and soon enough, you'll have a business that not only makes ends meet, but also allows you to live comfortably and enjoy the fruits of your hard work. 
Now, I get that some businesses do require significant capital, but before you rush to take out a loan and start in debt, ask yourself, is there something else you can do to raise that capital? Maybe you can start a smaller venture first to generate the funds you need. The last thing you want is to be weighed down by debt before your business even gets off the ground. And don't underestimate the power of social media and wanted ads for inspiration. Look at what people are talking about, what services they wish they had, and what's currently missing in the market. This can give you invaluable insights into potential business ideas that meet real needs. Finding a niche where demand is high and supply is low is a great way to position yourself for success. And don't forget to have fun with it. After all, the journey is just as important as the destination. Good luck, and go turn those entrepreneurial dreams into reality, one small step at a time. Hmm. Oh, I almost forgot. My new business idea. Ha! I'm not going to tell you. And that's the other piece of advice, the final piece of advice. Don't talk, act. Three reasons, guys. Talk is cheap. If you talk about your idea too much, it will never get any further. Negativity. People will give you a million reasons why it can't or won't work and crush your dream. People suck like that. And you have to be prepared to fail anyway, guys. Remember, failing is life's best teacher. Look, I've outlined a few small businesses I've run that worked. Trust me, I haven't told you about my cleaning business that failed, or my kid's suitcase business that failed, or my bespoke furniture business. Believe me, I've failed. And the last one may be pretty obvious to many of you, idea theft. Someone will steal your idea for crying out loud. While you're busy yapping about it, they're doing it. Loose slip, sink ships. Take action, take risks, start slow, and have fun. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap the video up here. If you like this type of content and you're new around here, please consider subscribing. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Muito obrigado, amigos. Ciao.